Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. I am going to go ahead and proceed with that video that I didn't feel was really good enough to post, but since you all said that you wanted to see it, I am going to go ahead and play the video for you. So let's get rolling. But I'm going to go ahead and start here with my sketch. I'm going to just grab myself my trusty HB pencils. I love these pencils. They're my favorite. They are Staedtler Mars Lumograph pencils, and they are terrific. And HB, I tend to smear a lot, and... Uh, I'm a lefty and I drag my hand all over the place. I don't know why that is, but I smear a lot. So I'm using a piece of Saunders Waterford paper. This is rough and it looks like the mountains come in just above the halfway mark. So if this were half, I'm going to come in right just above here. And that stormy sky I need to have room for. It looks like there's houses here, but I'm going to skip those, I think. Then the rest is trees and stuff that I can look at as I'm as I'm painting. Okay, now I'm going to clean my palette off and then we'll get started with the colors I'm going to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my paints here. A little bit, not much. There's some weeds or something up in the front in the water. Now, although I've picked a lot of colors and you see them here on my palette, you don't have to choose all of these colors. I'm just making my life easier. And as you see, even though I've chosen a lot of colors, people will talk a lot about color harmony. And even though I've chosen a lot of colors in that palette, you'll notice all of my reds are on the warm side. My greens tend to be on the warm side until you get to the waters which are more on the cool side. So I've kept the color harmony there and you'll see that. But like I said, you can mix phthalo blue and a cool yellow to get phthalo green. You can mix um, your blue, like an ultramarine blue with a yellow ochre to give you more of an olivey color green or a warmer yellow, like a Hansa yellow medium or or gamboge or something like that, a warm yellow, like a school bus yellow, that will give you more of an olive color. But when you mix your blue with a, a cool yellow, like a lemon yellow or a Hansa yellow light or a permanent yellow light or whatever you're calling it, then you're going to get those cooler greens, so more of a sap color. So you don't need all those colors. And I use Joseph C's gray because I like it. I also have Payne's Blue Gray. I don't usually use Payne's Gray, so I use the Payne's Blue Gray and I use uh, Joseph Z's most of the time. I'm using Joseph Z's here, which has more of a lavender base in it, which I'm going to show you. I thought I was filming all this time and I wasn't. I put some Aussie Red Gold down and now I'm going to go ahead and go in with some of the gray and it's real dark in some areas, and then in other areas, it's lighter. It almost has a red color to it, too. So I may add a little bit of my burnt sienna in there. I think I will. Just That might be too dark, though. I just want to get a little bit of that hint of red. I shouldn't have used that. I don't like it. So we peel it back. There we go. I'm gonna go back in with that and I need to get a different red, maybe something a little bit cooler, but not too cool, some Quin Coral.
Now here for the mountain area, I was taking some of my Joseph Z's Cool Gray and mixing it with some of my Gothite Brown. I probably could have just used my um, greenish raw umber. Would have worked just as good, maybe better. But I'm liking this color and the way it's turning out for these, these unique mountains. Uh, so I'm going to continue on with that. And there are trees in here, but they're so small. I'm not sure how they're going to show. Uh, some of this is going to be really light. Like in here, I really want this lighter right in here. I'm just going to take some water through it there. can always darken it. It's not always easy to lighten it, so I'm just going to take this down a little bit like this because the mountains get lighter in certain areas. They almost look like sand almost, but not quite. So if I just keep wetting this, And there's this Prussian green that I wanted to introduce back here. But I want to mix it in with this brown so that it doesn't look so... I'm, I think I'm going to have to maybe go with some indigo instead to gray it down a little more. Yeah. But then there's other trees that come in that I should have drawn in because now I've got to really concentrate on where I'm putting this paint just like that I think that's all I needed and then up here there's some trees but I'm going to add the indigo to it again I'm going to leave that for now till it dries and I want to work on this front area I'm just getting this in as a base color. It'll be the lightest color, and then I can glaze over this with other colors. Um, that might need a little quinacridone. And I don't care if this color mixes together because this is all going to be trees through here anyway, and some of them are going to get real tall. So. Um, the color mixing in is just fine with me. I just want to get rid of the white of the paper here. That's what I'm basically doing at this point. My trees will not be this color, so. Alrighty. So, put that back, and now I'm going to get back in. I need to let that dry. And I think I'll just work on this front little portion here, which is, it looks like, excuse my arm, you guys, I gotta blow this picture up. Looks like there's a little bit of debris or something up here. And then maybe a little bit of... Now, as you can see in that lower area where I just put that little bit of brown, um, I was still on track until I started adding the green to it and my brain must have fallen out because I started adding it above that line where between those two lines is supposed to be water. So things start to go downhill at this point. Also, as time goes on, I'm beginning to tighten up a little bit more. So rather than say that I ruined the painting, it was just tighter than I wanted it to be with the trees and everything that'll be going in. And I shouldn't have even thought about doing it loose because it wasn't the right painting to be doing loose anyway. So I should have disregarded that. And maybe in the back of my mind, I already was disregarding that, I don't know. But this area in the corner is really disturbing to me. And I may still redo the painting in a bigger scale and then I'll fix the water and everything. The debris up over here too. I don't know if it's weeds or what, or if it's uh, the surface of the dirt. Could be a little both. But, and then 
Then there's this bluey green color. It looks like a rich blue almost. It's bizarre. So I'm just going to... Oh, that's too stark. And now we go way down the rabbit hole. That phthalo green that I put on there was the wrong color to use. I believe that was phthalo green. But now that it's on there, it stains immediately. I mean immediately. So removing it is not an option. So things are really starting to go bad at this point. The stains so easily too. There, that won't be too bad. Maybe this Prussian again, I don't know. What color is that? Maybe mix a little indigo in with it. That'll help bring it down a little bit. They're really weird plants or something. This is the color that I was trying to put in. I don't even know why I bothered with it. You don't have to be exact when you're putting something in. But you see the little bit of brown line where that plant life is dead along there? That's the line that I put in. I'm putting all of this color up here, and it should be down at the bottom. So that's where things really go wrong. And then my attempts to fix it get even more out of control. So <laughs> let's see where this goes. And they're interspersed with this light green color. And then I'm going to go in with olive. Actually, before I do that, I want to get an undercoating of something down. I'm just going to put this down. There. Then, we'll go in with this. So as you can see, now I've totally filled in that entire area that should be water. And I'm going to attempt to fix it, and I'm just going to make matters worse. This is definitely a warm versus cool painting, and there's not a lot to change. I mean, I don't want to change it. It looks so beautiful the way it is, so I'm going to do warm and cool. Now, putting in those background trees the way I am, I'm just using the point of the brush, and it's like triangles going across the page. You don't need a lot of detail in the back. All I need is to get the, the zigzag. And I probably could have painted it in that way. That would have been quicker. But at this point, I'm just getting tightened up, tighter and tighter and tighter. And I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was a pain day. I don't remember. It's been a little while since I painted the painting. And I've got, got so many videos I've got to edit. They're piling up. But anyway, I'll try to pounce them out and get them out for you. I, I don't remember why I tightened up on the painting. But yeah, you could paint zigzags in if you want to just do it that way and be really quick. I'm just dabbing all the way across. and Either way is fine. But you don't need to put individual branches in. When, you're in the, when things are in the background, all you see, in fact, in the beginning, I didn't even realize those were trees in the mountains in the back, way, way back, because they appeared almost black. And I couldn't figure out, was that rock? Was it shadow? And then when I zoomed in, I realized it was trees. So don't put a lot of detail into your background trees. Save it for the foreground.
Now, as I'm putting the water in, I realize, oh no, what did I do here? And I start trying to swipe that kyanite genuine across this area that I have made land, and now I'm going to try to make it water again, and it just doesn't work out. I'm moving on to the left side of the painting because I need to put some bushes in there. And I'm not really happy with the bush that ends up being put in there either. With the detail I have on those distant pine trees that are starting to move forward into the mid-ground, which you can see well in the photo, um, the foreground bush should have had a lot of detail because it's like right in your face. And I didn't put enough detail in, and you'll see that happen as well. Because it's a different color like that, I'm putting grasses in here so that they kind of look like weeds growing up in the water. Maybe I should put some lily pads. Okay, mistake 220, <laughs> trying to put lily pads in. What was I thinking? I should have just put pine trees in. They were everywhere. I could have put pine trees in. But I didn't. And I'm going to show you a way that I could salvage this painting when we get to the end. Now I'm going to add the bush in on the right hand side and not give it enough detail either.
So at this point, I stopped filming altogether, took the tape off and thought, eh, heck with it. I am done. Now, what could I have done to fix it? First of all, this area right here, I would have probably put trees in. Small trees, something, I don't know. I should have put something in there and it would have taken up this area. These bushes, I should have had a lot more detail on. And I could either make those pine trees to cover it up. I could go back and paint in front of it like a giant pine tree coming up either side or one side. I might do that on this side. Maybe just have a large pine tree go all the way up so that it looks like I am right I'm right next to this tree and it'll block most of this. I think I may do that and then I can show you how I would fix it. The other option of if I don't want to do that would be, let me grab something here, cut it and make it stop at about here but then you lose so much of the water that was so pretty down at the bottom, which I did like. I liked the dry brushing that I had done on the water down there. But if I wanted to get rid of all that mess, I could easily just cut it off right there and have that be my painting and then just mat it around there. But I think instead, I can go both ways. I'm still, I'm gonna put this big pine tree in here and if that doesn't fix the bottom portion a little bit, then I will cut it off at that point, even leaving the big pine tree in there, but just cut it off at that point. Let me turn the camera around and I'm gonna try to salvage this thing. I think what I might do is a few pine trees coming up and they may be a little sparse as they go through so that I can save some of the background without covering the entire thing up. If I make them sparse, like they have branches that have died off, um, that might be a little bit easier for me to cover things up with. I can put some pine in here and then have the trunk come up and a little bit of pine here and there and then just have it die off. Okay, now you're going to see where I really, really, once and for all, finally ruin the painting. Here it comes. Well, I was going to finish this, do these pine trees over here, then saw this green over here. Must have been Prussian green because... I cannot get it out of there. So I'm going to scratch this painting and call it ruined because I made it worse. I was scrubbing this out so that I could redo it. And as I scrubbed it out, I must have I hit the brush on my paper. Well, I've totally ruined the painting. Totally ruined the painting. I didn't even realize that my brush tapped across the sky up here. I was going to put these pine trees in across this side, and it would have worked. It was a little difficult because I was painting with watercolor on top of a lot of color that was already down. And when you do that, it's very difficult to, to get 
done correctly, but I would have been able to salvage it. I wasn't happy that I was covering so much up on top though. And then when I saw the three dots over here and tried to scrub them out, it was like, well, there's nothing I can do now. I've ruined the entire thing. So in the garbage it goes. I am done and I will call it a learned lesson. It was only a few hours out of my life and I had fun for a little while till I started ruining it and then I just kept making it worse and making it worse and making it worse and making it worse and sometimes that happens you know it happens to the best of us so you've seen my mess what not to do how I would have changed it and then I screwed it up anyway so it will be torn up put in the garbage and maybe I'll paint the scene again it is a beautiful scene and if I could get it done right which I'm not in the mood for right now but one day, if I can get it done right, then I will repaint it. But in the meantime, you guys, be courageous. Paint with Wild Abandon. But most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. See you in the next one.